Hi guys. Okay, today is going to be a little bit of a continuing review, we'll call it. Um, when we had my event uh, back in the spring, I reacquired through a gift a Buck 110. And I carried Buck 110 a lot back in my youth. And so now let's, let's have, let's say, a six months update on the Buck 110. The leather sheath has held up fine. It's been on my belt most days, or some days I can't wear it to the courthouse or something. But most times it's been riding on my belt, and it held up real well. Good leather sheaths. And this is the classic 110. Now, for you guys that was raised with real light plastic knives, this thing's a brick. But that's also part of its strength. It's very robust, very tough. The tip is a nice upswept tip, very good for detail work and precise cuts in small and tight places. Putting your thumb up there on that false back edge like that to get into the tight details. Perfect for ripping open boxes, cutting bands, etc. Now it does good as a fish cleaner. It's not that good of a skinning knife because that upswept tip gets in the way. So you have to lift the hide up and cut through it as opposed to a rounded edge that hit and you just push it like a zipper. So that's one detriment on the Buck 110, but there are very few. It's got good heavy bolsters, good liner, etc., and it fills the hand very well. And that's one of its great advantages. It gives a good hand feel. The hand doesn't fatigue quickly when you're doing quite a bit of work with it. Now, back in my youth, everybody had a Buck 110. I mean, this was the quintessential farm knife. This was the working knife. This was the knife that rode in your back pocket. This was the Christmas knife. This was the birthday knife. This was the knife that everybody got in those special occasions and stuff like that. It was a Buck 110. And the Buck 110 in those days, the steel they utilized held an edge extremely well. Disadvantage, they were very hard to sharpen because the steel was so hard, the average Arkansas stone that you picked up at the hardware store would just skid on it. Today you've got diamond homes, and today they changed the steel back about 25 years ago to make it an easier to sharpen steel. It still holds an edge very well, but today it's much easier to sharpen. So it's easier to maintain that good sharp edge for doing detail work. That big broad back on it fits into the hand well and doesn't raise hot spots. It fits well and whenever you're sitting there and doing cutting tasks like making feather sticks, like you know shaving or cutting trap parts, what have you, it does a good job. That tip, even on this hard oak, you can sit and do precise work with it by just using just the tip. See, I use my thumb as a bridge to push up and peel down, that tip slices in and allows me to do very detailed little notches and things like that. It was designed for woodsmen, for hunters, for sportsmen, things like that. That's what this knife was designed for way back then. And when I became aware of it, it was in the mid-70s because this became, like I said, the knife that all the guys wanted, all the high school guys had. And back in the days when we carried knives to school, because every one of us used them, it was a tool. We didn't get upset because somebody had a knife, because everybody had a knife. And these pocket knives were a common day-to-day -day event. I have cut a tire off of a car before, because the tire blew out, and it, when it came off the rim, it wrapped around the axle. And I had to get up under that truck with a buck 110 and cut the tire off of the car that way. It would do it. They're very tough. Now, the most common weakness is how thin that tip gets. And it can bend. It can get damaged if you're prying on it in too tight an area. So, be kind of mindful of that. It's a detailed tip. But you're going to do the bulk of your work back here. And from, let's say, this point back is the bulk of your carving and doing jobs. So this is a good knife to have, even today. Now, if you like the look of it, the black head thing's too heavy. They make an ultralight version of it with a, a uh, modern uh, synthetic handle. 
something like G10 or something like that, or some sort of plastic, basically, handle that greatly lightens the weight and makes it a lot lighter. But for an old guy like me, the old classic 110, they last forever. And how many times you go into a pawn shop or a curio shop or a junk shop, and there'll be one of these old veterans laying there, it might be 40 years old, still working that now somebody's traded it off or inherited it or whatever. So they stay in the field and they keep working. I wish I had a dollar for every deer that was ever cleaned one of these or ever hog or ever pig or chicken in the barnyard because these knives worked. They were a good, solid working knife. So if you're looking for a pocket knife that's a little bit more than a small little knife you want, it to have robustness and strongness so I can do a little light bushcraft with it. Look at the Buck 110. It's a very good knife for that. And I still use mine quite a bit. Hope you enjoyed this review, guys. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. And do me a favor and hit that like, share, and subscribe before you go. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.